Thank you. Hi, this is Elizabeth Clare Brewington with Brightside Global Trade TV, and we're now launching our speaker channel. And I am so proud and honored to bring you a master educator. So best-selling business author, Joyce Joyer, is a world-class professional speaker, a management consultant, a celebrity consultant, uh, and a futurist. She regularly informs and inspires audiences to creatively recruit, engage, and retain their stakeholders. A TEDx speaker, Joyce has presented to audiences in 47 of the United States, in 32 countries, on seven continents, and on seven seas for clients including SAP, BP, Viking Cruises, Procter & Gamble, and Honda. Her new show, It's Your Future, with Joyce Joya is now on Futures Television channel. And I'm on that channel with her as well. So I'll make sure you have a link to that video. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the BW Studios. And we're so honored and excited to do this interview. Um, I love the book and I highly recommend it to anyone who is doing a training or wants to be at the CEO level or is doing a benchmark study, this is a this is a really good book. So let's begin with telling us your story and what got you to this point where you published your first book. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's really an interesting story because I started out in marketing and sales. I graduated from college, sadly, at the age of 20. <laughs> and I say sadly because in Denver in 1960, mm -hmm, <laughs> there were no jobs for women with college degrees, especially ones who were as young as I was. Smart ones. <laughs> and, um, and I ended up working for an employment agency. So that was my first dipping my toe into human resources, which, by the way, at, those, at that time in life was called personnel. And then I ended up in from from working for the employment agency where I was the top producer for two years in a row. I got really bored with it. Unfortunately, I also have a low threshold of boredom. I ended up, interestingly, in retail sales. You've probably heard of Denver Mattress. Well, the previous iteration of Denver Mattress was World of Sleep, and I was one of their salespeople way back when, when the company was like in its infancy. And from there, I ended up marrying a fellow who was a college professor at Fordham University, and he was in New York City. I actually was walking down a street in Denver, and I met a guy putting sample cases into the trunk of a car. And I said, how do you get into road sales? I think I might want to do that. And he said, well, I need to get to the airport. You help me get to the airport and I'll help you get into road sales. No kidding. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> and I said, well, I have a car and you have a car. So why don't you follow me? He said, great. I'll buy you a shrimp cocktail when we get there. And he did. And he said, there's this guy in New York who hires women for road sales. He's the only person in the country who does, and maybe in the world, who hires women for road sales because he believes that women are better salespeople. And I said, great. And he gave me the referral and I called the guy the next day and he said, when, when are you coming to New York? And I said, he, I said to him, as soon as you'll send me a ticket. And two weeks later, he sent me a ticket to fly to, to New York from Denver. The day before I left, I quit my job in Denver. It wasn't going anywhere anyway. They had moved me to a suburban store and it was, didn't have the traffic that the, the in 
city yeah. store had, right? And I ended up going to New York, but instead of sending me out on the road because he thought I was a little young for that, he had me working in the in the office, but in a different way. He had decided, because I was so good on the telephone, so he said, I was the best person on the telephone he had ever spoken with, interestingly. He said, I need somebody to organize, to set up a, a what we now call um, an outbound telemarketing operation. And I did that for him for one of the divisions of the company, which was Alfred Angelo. I'm going to make a, a long story much shorter. I ended up working with him. I broke records working with American Bride Publications. He moved from the, the manufacturer to a magazine. That was the beginning of my career in magazines. And I he recruited me in 10 weeks. I broke records and they, the program made budget for the first time. And, and from there, I ended up in national space sales for a magazine, which was really hard to do because typically they didn't hire women to do national space sales. And so that was kind of my marketing career. I had some time in direct marketing, working for an agency. And then in 1993, I met a man who would become my husband and partner, a guy named Roger Herman. And Roger Herman was a speaker and had written, I think it was by that time, something like eight or nine books in the field of employee retention. And I was a, a marketing speaker. He was a human resources speaker. And one day I was sitting in the audience and it suddenly occurred to me, it was like a light bulb went off over my head. I even audibly said, oh, wow. And, and I was afraid, then I was afraid somebody might've heard me. <laughs> but what I realized was that his messages about HR were identical to my messages about attracting and optimizing and keeping good customers. This book is the culmination of all of my experience, which by the way, started in high school when I founded my first business, Jack and Jill Parties for Children. And I, I brought together all of the experience that I had had and all of the, the learnings across those decades of working in those different fields to this book. And what I realized and what caused me to write this book was not that I said, oh, I've got all this information and all of this understanding, but rather that I saw that there were popping up experience consultants for employees and experience consultants for customers, which came first, and experienced consultants, interestingly, for investors. And I said, well, if those three groups are important, why not all the stakeholders of an organization? If an organization really wants to optimize profit, then it better be delivering the best experiences that it possibly can to all of its stakeholders, not just the employees and customers who are the two groups that most people think about. Wow. Wow. And that's why when I read it, I said, this is like a comprehensive master guide. Uh, it really is because there's so much in information in it that people, especially at the CEO level, will really appreciate it um, as I did too. So it is a wealth of information and the book is available everywhere. So please get it. Um, so let's go to the big picture. 
uh, I just love the fact that, you know, you use that word, the big picture. So tell us what you mean by the big picture. Well, the big picture, you know, you talked about CEOs, right? Mm -hmm. CEOs work at the strategic level. And in fact, I just talked about this in a coaching session, group coaching session that I delivered on the Ngomu app on Wednesday, that it's like the, the mountaintop or even higher than the mountaintop. When you are that high, when I don't know about you, but I love to sit in windows when I go on airplanes. And the reason I love to sit on windows is that it's a panoramic view of what's below. You can see for miles and miles and miles. And that's where you can see the big picture. That's where you can get that level of objectivity. That strategic level is where you get that objectivity that will really help you to be profitable and to reduce your own stress as a business leader. And you asked how positive experiences drive profit. What I came to understand is that positive experiences drive engagement and engagement drives the profit. Yes. And the higher the levels of engagement that you have with your employees, with your customers, with the families of employees and the families of your customers, with your community, with your suppliers and vendors, all of these groups are important. The higher the levels of engagement, the more profitable you will be. Because the definition of stakeholder is someone who has a vested interest in your success. And what you're doing is you're capitalizing on that vested interest in your success. And the best part is that everybody wins. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is that is a great secret. Yeah, keep those stakeholders happy. Um, so wooing onboarding candidates, because the key is to, to attract the best talent. And how do you go about doing that? It's, it's all about the experience. Mm -hmm. And it's all about understanding that each and every employee that you already have can be an ambassador for you to the world. It's also about understanding that onboarding begins and the wooing, the courting, the courtship process begins with their very first contact with your organization, whether it's a billboard or a phone call or something that they see in a magazine about your organization. It's that first contact. They make a decision about whether yours would be a good organization for them to work in whether they would feel comfortable there. Everything that's published about your organization, every, every single mention in social media is going to either contribute or take away from what prospective candidates and prospective applicants feel about your organization. Absolutely. You, you and have that infinite opportunities. Yes, so that's that is true. Um, so I was I was very interested because uh, we have Brightside has a consulting arm that helps importers, and I'm always telling people that you know your suppliers are ven uh, and vendors are very important. Most people think that when they pay you, uh, you know they would rather work with people who pay them, but. I, I was very interested because when I read the book, I said, this is very important. So why do you think people should pay more attention to their suppliers and vendors? Why are these important? When was the last time you were in a supermarket? Um, Yesterday. Okay. 
Did you see empty spaces on those shelves? No, they were all not any. Mm, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I did see. Yeah, I'm. You would be surprised if you start paying attention to it that there are empty spaces on every store's shelves because we have amazingly still pervasive supply chain issues. Now, jump to being a company and your business to business, right? Mm -hmm. You have the attitude of partnering with your suppliers and vendors, whereas your competition has the attitude, you're lucky that I'm buying from you. I know, that's true. Who is that supplier or vendor going to think of first? It's the organization that wants to be in partnership, not the organization who doesn't value that relationship, correct? That's correct. And given that supply chain <laughs> supply chain issues are here and they don't seem to be going away as fast as everybody, including me, would like to see them go away. <laughs> Having those relationships with suppliers and vendors is, is vitally important because as market cycle and there are shortages of different things, who gets served? It's the ones that have the good relationships. So how can you improve those relationships? Good communication. Be in touch with your supplier and vendor. Think of them as your strategic partner. Tell them what you intend to do with your products or services as you move into the future. So that as their new products get developed, they'll tell you first. You have first right of refusal on things. It's yeah. a it's a, a really wonderful position to be in with a supplier and vendor. Yep. And also, like I think during COVID, uh, a lot of people started to value their suppliers because when you ran short on products, it was the suppliers who were able to get you things that, you know, you couldn't get. So, yeah, we saw that happen a lot. And uh, that is so true. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll give you another quick example, if I may. So HVAC technicians will tell you that from time to time, there are real shortages of Freon. Mm -hmm. They can't do their job mm -hmm. without Freon, which is the gas, of course, that cools down the condenser and helps with the air conditioning, right? So who gets, who gets the product in times of shortage? Yep. It's the nice. Yes companies it's the nice customers it's not the ones who yes, so are be, hostile and and difficult to deal with yeah yep so be nice to them now the my favorite topic is ai and i see you have a a complete chapter on the intersection of ai and ar and vr um so tell us about that sure and uh, where do you think we're going as a future with this oh Whoa, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. I could write a whole book on it and I could speak for six hours on that topic. Yes. But let me just explain. I'll give you a quick overview. And that is AI is artificial intelligence, of course. And we're seeing such strides happening in that particular field. I mean, everybody and his uncle knows about ChatGPT. And in fact, not for nothing, but you might have just used this uh, chat GPT to, de to either develop or make better this list of questions because that's what it can do. It is amazing that way. AR stands for augmented reality and VR stands for virtual reality. There are companies now who are actually selling products to people in augmented reality. There are others 
who will be selling products to people in virtual reality. We can have meetings in virtual reality. We, I, I, in fact, one of the things that I wanted to do, which I did, was I gave a presentation in a, an artificial universe called Second Life. Now, Second Life was the, it, it's an online universe. And there were a lot of big companies that had whole countries and buildings and all kinds of, all kinds of facilities on, in this universe. And in fact, IBM was onboarding their worldwide teams in Second Life. It was amazing. I have a video of that where the people appear in particular spaces and and it it's it's a very engaging platform as well and and virtual reality is as well. The problem that we have currently is that the new Apple glasses, which are supposed to be amazing, are $3,500. And that particular price point is not a general consumer price point yet. Wow. How exciting. Can't wait. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, final tips for CEOs and recommendations for the book. Uh, and tell us where they can buy the book and, sure. uh, and how they could use the book, possibly. Um, the book is available on Amazon, right there on the Amazon book site. All you have to put in is Experience Rules, Joyce Joya, and it comes up. And you can buy either soft cover or hard cover. Uh, Elizabeth has a soft cover because they came in sooner and I wanted to get bo a book in her hands. This is the hard cover. You'll notice that it's in what we call case laminate. And I did that because of sustainability. I'm a futurist and I believe in sustainability. And advice for CEOs. Let me go back to that. My advice for CEOs is take care of your stakeholders and they will take care of you. When you focus on giving the best experiences that you can to all of your stakeholders, you will be optimizing bottom line profit. Now, the way to do that is found in the final chapters of the book, which is probably why they should buy the book. Yes, buy the book. Yes. <laughs> and if they would like to spend five or 10 minutes talking with me about their particular challenges or how they can use the book, I'm happy to speak with them in person. Just reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm at Joyce Joya, and that's spelled G-I-O-I-A. And the Joyce part is not with an I, but with a Y. It's J-O-Y-C-E-G-I-O-I-A. That's been such a privilege, such an honor, a master educator. I really, really enjoyed this interview, and I hope to have you back on our show. And thank you for the book and for your speaking and teaching and sharing <laughs> with the world, uh, getting us to a better place is how I would say it. Um, thank, you. thank you, Elizabeth. Thank for you those, for this opportunity. And for those of you who are watching, please subscribe, hit the bell button. And as we say, the bright side way, snap a shot of the book. Tell us that you made a purchase and we'll give you two tickets to our next show. So get the book, take a photo so we know you're watching and paying attention and write us a comment or write a review. And we would love that. Thank you for watching.